In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint the Legion of the Empress Children. Hello everyone and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So we're going to jump straight into the painting on this video because we've got a lot to cover. So I'm going to go through the step-by-step -step process of painting up this awesome Praetor Terminator in the Legion colours of the Empress Children. Now the first thing you're going to notice is I'm going to be painting this as sub-assemblies. So there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is it makes it easier for me to show you what's happening on camera. And the second thing is it means that I can paint in details which would be difficult to get to or obscured if it was fully assembled. You'll also notice that this model's already been primed for painting. For this I've used some Vallejo surface primer all over in black to begin with and then a zenithal prime of grey just to pick out those details. And finally, throughout this video, I'm also going to be indicating what brush I'm using during each stage, and that'll be indicated up at the top with these little labels. Okay, so let's start getting some paint on the model, and we're going to start off with painting in all of the armor joints and the tubing, and for this I'm going to use some Eschen Grey from Games Workshop. Really simple stage to start off with then. I've just added a little bit of water just to thin the paint down so it goes on nice and clean and smooth. I'm just gonna paint in all of these armor joints and these hoses. I'm using a nice big brush so I can get this done nice and quick. Um, I've thinned it down so that I'll probably only need one coat, but if you don't get a solid finish with that first coat, then let it dry and apply a second to make sure you do get a solid finish. Uh, whilst painting this, I've just decided I'm going to paint in these vents as well on the back. I'm not quite sure what they're meant to be, so I just thought they'd look pretty cool in some ash and grey as well. And of course, not forgetting, for each of these stages, don't forget to paint in any sub-assemblies you might have. So for example, on this rifle arm, I'm going to paint in the tube here, um, obviously the armour joints, and I'll probably do the rifle casing as well. With all those Eschen details now painted in, I'm going to move on to painting in the purple armour, which is obviously the main feature of this model. And for this, I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of purple from Pro Acryl and violet from Scale 75. Now you're probably wondering what's the point in having a mix, surely you can find a purple which matches exactly what you want. Now interestingly I've spent a long time trying to find that ideal purple and it turns out that these two purples combined together, to, in my mind, makes the best purple. But the advantage of actually mixing these two colours is if you wanted a slightly more pinky reddy purple, you can just add a little bit more of the um, Pro Acryl purple, but if you wanted more of a deeper violet colour, then you can add more of the scale 75 color uh, it actually means that you get the best of both worlds you can mix that perfect color that you want Now in terms of applying it to the model, once you've found your perfect mix, just make sure you've added that little bit of water to keep it nice and thin, and then just apply it as two smooth coats to get to a solid finish. Now as you can see, the aim here really isn't being particularly neat, unless of course you get to those edges near the ash and grey details, in which case just take a little bit more care when you get to those. Uh, but if you do make any mistakes, then just let it dry and you can paint back in the ash and grey, that's not a problem. Um, don't try and paint around all the trim because you're going to be painting that back in later. The main aim really is to get it on nice and clean and smooth and make sure that you get paint into all of the creases and the recesses around the details. One final little tip regarding mixing paint, and you'll notice when you mix these two colors together that when they're wet, they're a very different color to when they're dry. 
being dry, it's a lot darker. So it's definitely worth keeping a sample on a palette or a little mixing pot like this of what the dry color is that you've been using so that when you come back later to paint more troops for your army, you've got a reference to refer back to. So then you can mix it up on your palette, take a bit of the wet paint and put it next to your sample, dry it off because obviously you need to compare dry to dry. And then you can make sure that what you're gonna paint with is gonna match with the paint that you've been using before. Right then, so while that purple armor is drying, I'm just gonna move on and I'm gonna base coat in the shoulder pads. And for this, I want them to be white, so I'm actually gonna base coat in with a very pale gray. And for this, I'm gonna use some Ulthorn gray from Games Workshop. So the trick really to painting white is to never actually use pure white unless it's for a very extreme edge highlight. So to get a nice smooth looking white, you need to use a pale gray. So I've added a bit of water to this and I'm using a large brush because I don't need to be careful. And I'm just gonna paint in a couple of coats to make sure I get a nice solid finish. So with all that purple painted in, you should now have something that looks a bit like this. And now comes the stage that we all love, and that's painting in that gold trim. And for this, I'm gonna use some old gold from Vallejo. For this step, it's very much a case of slow and steady wins the game. You just need to be patient and slowly work your way around all the trim, painting it in with the gold. Now the gold will take a couple of coats to get a solid finish, so like I say, just be patient, make sure you keep it thin so it goes on really cleanly and smoothly, and the end results will speak for themselves. So now I'm trying to be as neat and careful as possible, but obviously mistakes will happen. So if you do happen to get the gold onto the purple, then don't panic, just let it dry and you can paint back in with the purple later. For that extra little bit of control at this stage, I've moved down to a size one brush. This isn't because it has a sharper point or anything. It's mainly because it holds less in the bristles. And that just means that you get that extra bit of control and it won't flow out of control. Okay then, so after two coats of that old gold and a little bit of tidy up of the purple, you should now have something that looks a bit like this. And already you're getting a feel for how it's gonna look in the end. So moving on, we're gonna now paint in all of the silver details. And for this, I'm gonna use some pewter from Dark Star Miniatures. Now, I have to say, after painting all of that fine filigree on the gold trim, it's quite nice to be painting a large area again. But I am gonna stick with my size one brush because there are some small details of silver that I will be painting in. I've added a little bit of water just to make sure the paint goes on cleanly and smoothly. And I will be painting this as two thin coats to make sure I get a solid finish. Now, actually, I'm quite surprised there's quite a few different silver details on this model, such as these leg panels here. So make sure you work your way around the model and pick out all of those silver details. And of course, not forgetting to paint any sub-assembly items as well. So for my next base coat color, I'm gonna paint in all of these sort of flowing robes. And for this, I'm gonna use some flat black from scale 75. This black from scale 75 is such a wonderful paint to paint with. And you need to add a little bit of water, obviously, to get it moving because it's gel based, but it goes on so cleanly and smoothly. Um, I'm using my big brush again because there's not that many details to get in the way. But for the smaller areas, I might go down to a size one. Now I'm going to paint it in the direction of the folds and I'm going to keep it as clean and smooth as I can. Moving on now and I'm going to turn my attention to base coating all of the gems on the model and for this I'm going to use some warp stone glow from Games Workshop. So I want the surface of these gems to be ultra smooth, so I've thinned the paint down a little bit more than usual, and I'll probably have to paint um, two or three coats to get to a solid finish. 
Now because a lot of these gems on the model are actually quite small, I've switched down to my size 1 brush just to make sure I don't overload my brush with too much paint. So while those gems are drying, I'm just going to paint in the braided rope and tassels. And for this, I'm going to use some Kalahari Orange from Scale 75. So exactly the same process as with all the other base coats so far. A little bit of water, make sure it goes on nice and clean and smooth. I'm using a size 1 brush so I don't make any mistakes. If I do, then I can just let it dry and I can tidy things up later. So as I'm painting this in, it's occurred to me that I have absolutely no idea what this rope tassel thing is actually called. So if you do know, then please do drop it in the comment below, because it feels like something I should know and would be quite useful for these videos. That just leaves one final base colour now, and that's the strap for the rifle. And for this, I'm going to use some Abaddon Black from Games Workshop. Nice and easy step then, just thin it with a touch of water and then apply to the strap. With all of the base colours now applied, it's time to move on to some washes. And I'm going to start off with the gems, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. And for this, I'm going to use some Mortarian Green Clear from Games Workshop. So the reason this is different is because I'm not applying it and letting it run into the recesses. What I actually want to do is I want to heap it up so it makes a droplet on the surface. And then I'm going to use that surface tension to actually form a circle. So when you put a droplet of water onto a surface, it obviously makes a bit of a semicircle or a bubble. So what you want to do is you want to heap this onto the surface, but you're looking to do it in a very controlled way where you're using the surface tension of the liquid to hold a nice um, sharp line. And now I'm just going to tease it out because what I want to do is I want to cover the whole of the gem except for the bottom right hand slither, which is where I want my highlight to be. So I'm just going to tease it out and I'm going to make it into the shape that I'm after. Um, unlike other areas where I sort of cut away and show the end product, I'm going to leave this in real time so you can actually see the whole process. Okay, so what you're looking to get is something like that. And then when that's fully dried, it should look something like this. So sticking with the gems, I'm now just going to add a little bit of a highlight to the bottom right hand corner. And for this, I'm going to use some Moot Green from Games Workshop. So I'm doing this stage now before I apply any washes to the gold, just because it'll be a lot easier to go back in and tidy things up when I make a mistake. And it is a bit messy, so all I've done is I've thinned the moot green with some water, so it's nice and thin, and I can just apply a really thin line between the warpstone glow and the edge of the gold. Moving back again to applying washes, and this time I'm going to move on to all the purple armour. I'm going to apply a wash of purple tone from the Army Painter. So this time we're going to apply it in a more conventional way. Um, I'm going to apply an all over wash to all of the purple armour. But rather than wanting it to settle on all the surfaces, I'm going to encourage it to settle only in the recesses and the crevices. So on any of the flatter areas, we're only looking to sort of lightly wetten the surface, so it's a bit more like a glaze. Um, and I'm going to encourage all of the shade to go into all of the edges and the corners um, and try to get as little coverage on the flat surfaces as possible.
So for this step you do need to work quite quickly because you don't want to be moving the shade around as it's starting to dry because then you'll find it will clump up and make ugly blobs. So what I recommend you do is you work around the model panel by panel getting the uh, shade into all the recesses and edges of each panel before moving on to the next one. And not forgetting, of course, to apply the shade to all of the sub-assemblies as well. And then you need to make sure that the wash is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. And that next stage is going to be applying a shade wash to all of the gold trim. And for this, I'm going to use some serif from Sepia from Games Workshop. So this is pretty straightforward, but you do need to take care because you want to be very precise in your application and apply it only to the gold trim. So I'm using a size one brush just so I've got that extra bit of control. Uh, I can apply quite a heavy wash because I'm looking to get both warmth and shadow back into the gold. Uh, but just take your time and be careful not to get it onto the purple. The trick really is to let the wash do the work for you. So by touching it to the edges of the creases, you can let the capillary action draw that wash off your brush and into the cracks. And then all you really need to do is just gently push the shade around onto the areas that you want it to settle. Next, I'm going to add some shadow to the white areas on the shoulder pads. And for this, I'm going to use some Celestra Grey from Games Workshop. So what I've done is I've just thinned down the Celestra Grey with some water until it now has more of a consistency of a wash. And I'm just going to run it into all of the edges and these recesses just to give some shadow around the edges. Um, obviously, I'm going to try and keep it as neat and clean as possible. But if I do make any mistakes, I can just let it dry and tidy that back up again with some Allthorn Grey. Moving on now to the next step, which is going to be applying a shade wash to all of the silver and ashen grey areas. And for this, I'm going to use some Null Oil from Games Workshop. So this step is a pretty much standard wash, really. Just apply it to all the silver and ashen grey piping. Uh, don't forget to do all of the armour joints as well. Um, and make sure that it's fully dry before you move on to the next stage. While I was using the Null Oil, I also thought I'd take the opportunity just to darken down some of the um, deeper recesses on the purple armour, just to give them a bit of a darker shadow. Which brings us on to the final wash now, and that's going to be for the rope and tassels. And for this, I'm going to use some red tone from the Army Painter. So with my size 1 brush, I'm just going to carefully run this wash into all of the grooves and bring out that lovely detail on the roping and the tassels. So those washes have added some lovely shadow and depth to the model, but it has darkened it down. So now I'm going to brighten up the gold trim with some Liberator Gold from Games Workshop. Okay, don't panic. This isn't a case of having to go around and painting in all of the gold trim again. Actually, what you're looking to do is just paint in the areas that you want to be shiny again and leaving all of that settled shade in the recesses just to give the shadow. The, uh, the good thing about this Liberator Gold is when you thin it with a touch of water, it becomes a bit transparent, which basically means that you're just painting in um, the metallic fleck and you can still see the colour underneath. So you still get the advantage of the shading and the transition underneath. You are literally just painting in metallic fleck and bringing back that shine. So a good example would be painting in the wings of the Aquila here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just picking out the outermost edges of the feathers and leaving that shade in the recesses.
And then just to show you what a difference that makes, here it is without and with. Without and with. So with that gold trim looking a lot brighter now, we're going to finish it off with an edge highlight. I'm also going to edge highlight all the silver details, and for this I'm going to use some Stormhost Silver from Games Workshop. So this step is probably going to be the most time consuming, and it's the one that you need to be the most patient with. What you need to do is you need to pick out all the sharpest edges and the topmost edges of the gold trim and the silver details. Um, basically the areas where the light would catch the most and you're looking to pick those out with the storm host silver so for this step I've uh, thinned the paint slightly with some water just so it flows nice and cleanly and smoothly and I'm using my double zero brush so I've got as much control as possible now unfortunately there's no way of speeding this process up it's just a case of picking out those edges but there are ways of making your edge highlighting uh, more accurate and more consistent and if you'd like to know what those are then hang around to the end of this video and I'll tell you more. Right then, so with all of that gold trim and silver details now edged up, it's looking pretty cool. So now I'm going to carry on and I'm going to edge highlight all of the purple armor. And for this, I'm going to use some cacophony purple from Games Workshop. So this is exactly the same as the edge highlighting that you've just done on the gold trim and silver details. But the good news is there's far less to do on the purple armor. So it's just a case of going around and picking out all of the sharp edges and the uppermost edges on the purple armor with the cacophony purple. Now I've had quite a few people say that they really enjoy watching the edging process so I'm going to just let the camera roll for a bit so you can just see that process happen and I can completely relate to it because after a while you do get into a rhythm and it gets quite um, therapeutic and relaxing so I guess that translates on camera as well so um, enjoy just a few moments of pure edge highlighting. Okay, so hopefully everyone's really chilled out after that. And now it's time just to add an edge highlight to the rope and tassels. And for this, I'm gonna use Mars Orange from Scale 75. So for this step, it's just a case of picking out the raised areas on all of this lovely texture on the rope and tassels. You'll probably find that the Mars Orange, when it's thinned slightly, is a little bit transparent. So I did apply several coats to make sure I got a nice, strong, vibrant finish. It's at this point that I thought it'd be a good idea to get the whole model assembled just to make sure that all the parts were still fitting correctly and that everything was looking good. And I hope you'll agree it's starting to look pretty cool. It also gives me an opportunity to say I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, then please do give it a like. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, then hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. Okay, so moving on now, and there's just a few extra details to paint in, starting off with the uh, energy plasma details. And for this, I'm just gonna base coat those in with some bold titanium white from Pro Acryl. So you can pretty much use any pure white paint that you like for this stage. Um, I'm using the Pro Acryl because the coverage is great and you can pretty much get uh, a single coat to get a solid finish. The reason for doing this is we're gonna do a bit of a crude glowing effect. So we need to get a nice strong white for those details. Thank you. 
And then to complete the glowing effect, I'm going to paint over the white with some Pila Glacier contrast paint from Games Workshop. So I'm using this contrast paint very much like a wash. I'm using it neat straight from the bottle and I'm going to apply it directly over all of the white that I've just painted. Because it'll act like a wash, it'll settle into those recesses, but the raised areas will remain quite white, which will actually give quite a good glowing effect. What I also did was I painted over the edges of some of the surrounding metal areas, just to give the impression that there's a bit of a faint blue glow on those as well. Now I'm just going to paint in this scroll on the uh, shin armor and I'm going to start off with just a base coat of some Yushapti bone from Games Workshop. And then I'm going to give it an all over wash with some Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. And with that wash dry, I'm now just going to brighten it back up again with a touch of Yushabti Bone from Games Workshop. And then just to finish it off with a quick edge highlight of Screaming Skull from Games Workshop. And just as one final finishing touch now to all of the gems, I'm going to make them super glossy by applying a coat of Art Coat Varnish from Games Workshop. Okay, so um, the model's now complete and I've got it added to its base. Now, ordinarily, I would now just be showing you some final pictures, but I do get asked a lot how I do the dusting and weathering effect on the boots. So I just thought I'd show you very quickly how to do that. And it is just dry brushing on some weathering powder. In this particular case, it's orange rust from Cromlec. So the process is very similar to dry brushing. You just take a small amount of the powder into the bristles of the brush, rub off the excess onto some tissue, and then you can rub the brush against the model just to add that dusting effect to the feet. Uh, one quick word of warning, this is quite a messy process, so do put plenty of paper down and cover up everything before you start because this powder does have a tendency to go everywhere and it does stain because it is a pigment. So once you've got your dusting effect just how you want it, you will need to seal it and the best way to do that is just to put a light coating of a matte varnish from a rattle can. And with that varnish applied, my Emperor's Children Pray to Terminator is complete. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please do hit that like button now and drop a comment below and let me know what you thought to it and uh, any suggestions that you'd like to see for the future. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet, then please do hit that subscribe button now and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're told whenever I post another video. Speaking of other videos, as I mentioned earlier in this one, um, I have made a video on tips and tricks on how to improve your edge highlighting. So if you'd like to know more about that, then please do click here. Also, if you're interested to know details in terms of the basing that I used for this model, then you can find out how I made it and what colors I used by clicking this video here.